goes on. Okay. Dina, tell us first of all how excited you are about the eclipse. I mean, this is a, seeing the eclipse is a once in a lifetime. Some people have seen maybe two eclipses in their life, but being the age of 42, it's like, wow, I might, may or may not be here for the next one. So it's like, I got to enjoy all of it for what it is right now. Now you said see the eclipse as someone visually impaired. What does that mean to you? So as a blind person, experiencing the eclipse is not just about what you may be able to see. I have some residual vision, but because our environment reacts to the changes in light from animals to the temperature that we feel against our skin, I'll be able to experience those things along with people who are fully sighted, who may be looking through a telescope with protective lenses or with the eclipse glasses. I'll be able to experience it just along with them. And I have wonderful adapted materials here that give me a better idea of what's happening, the path of totality, and so I can be just as informed as the next neighbor next to me. Show us a, a little bit of that in your book. Okay. Show us what you mean. So, um, so our, it's important to, let's see. There you go. So it's important to understand, like a lot of people say, well, why don't we have eclipses very often? And, and it's important to understand like where where is the moon in all of this? And so with this tactile representation, I'm able to know where the sun is and how the kind of the shadow of the moon here and how it's almost like a pinpoint on earth. Even though we may not realize how big the earth is, the moon casting a very small path around our country or a lot of times in the ocean when eclipses happen, we understand fully like this is such a special and rare experience for us here. So this is a braille um, tactile graphic it's made out of thermoform, heating plastic in a way that raises the plastic to a point where you can feel it with your fingers as long with the braille. And for me, I get a better sense of what's what's happening. How important is it to you that kids and other people with impairments enjoy science? Well, we know um, not only within NASA, but just as regular people that innovative ideas can come from anywhere. And I don't want the barrier of the lack of sight to prevent a student who may have the solution for our next technological challenge to prevent them from discovering that for us. So if we can have materials like the tactile graphics books or the light sound box to help them experience the eclipse, to activate that idea, then that, that is worth it. That's worth figuring out how we're gonna do this and, and bringing this to their hometown. And that's why I'm excited to be here, to be back home and bringing the eclipse to blind and visually impaired kids. You mentioned that you, you lack sight, but to me, you have tons of insight. I, you know, I think um, I, I owe a lot of that to my to my parents. Um, they uh, lived in a different time of life where education was a bit harder for them. They attended segregated schools, so for them, high school was their last formal education. But for me, they knew that education was gonna be key for me to survive and even thrive. So even though they may not have fully understood chemistry and physics and later astronomy and all the engineering concepts that I talked endlessly about, they made sure that I could get to the chapter meetings of the engineering society or apply for scholarships. They made sure that I had the village that supported that kind of curiosity for myself. That's amazing. So tomorrow, just now, this is just for background for us. We have uh, talked with Dr. Constance, and she mentioned that you guys will have 100 to 200 um, students, along with NASA researchers here, mm -hmm. sending up balloons, sending up CubeSats, and also using Android cell phones to conduct research. Mm -hmm. What type of research and what do you plan to do with that research once you get it? Okay, so this is such a great opportunity, especially with our mobile devices. 
we can get a view of the sun that we rarely get an opportunity to see. And so with our citizen science, we're able to detect environmental changes such as temperature changes that people can actually do. Um, we can record any environmental changes with animals and wildlife around us. And that gives us a more holistic picture in this particular area that we may not be able to access even with our best and precise satellites. It's, it's our human experience that can help drive that scientific knowledge actually on the ground as it's happening. And it gives us a much more detailed view of what's happening when you have thousand points of um, data points and, you know, compared to some other kind of event where you may only have one or two data points. Wow. You're an inspiration. <laughs> so it, it's definitely, um, it's exciting because for us being primarily an um, agricultural state, it's nice to be able to tell the story that we can use the insights gained from um, the space weather events that we're seeing with our sun and its maximum level of activity that may uh, give us coronal eruptions or impact our ability to track our GPSs or satellite signals. We can give that information to people who are deciding what crops to use or how they're going to be able to access climate data. We can bring that home and say, yes, if you're a farmer, if you are um, just a regular person, you can access this information but here's where it came from. It came from the eclipse that happened in 2024, and we likely won't see that again for another 21 years. I think we're done. I think